My name is Elizabeth and I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> find me on Instagram as Frisbee Lizzie Stitches and this is my first plus two video. Um, I've been doing well my crafty side of me has started a long time ago but the cross stitch part of me kind of started last fall sort of. I'll get into I guess my craft story in a second but yeah I um, had when I first started Kind of really getting into cross stitch i had like a couple projects here and there but and i was watching floss tube but i didn't have um like a lot of stuff to show so i was very tempted to make a floss tube video a long time ago but i didn't because i didn't think i had very much content to share um but now that i've dug myself deeper into this cross stitch hole I definitely have enough stuff to show people and do some show and tell. So um, I kind of wrote up myself an outline to follow. Um, so I have stuff to talk about and it's in an order that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to start with kind of like how I started crafting and kind of like a craft life story, I guess. Um, so. The first kind of memory I have of really getting into crafting was um, making friendship bracelets. So when I was about eight years old, I was at some birthday party or something at a Michael's store and the kind of craft they had for the party was making friendship bracelets. And um, so I you know, picked out my two colors of DMC and we did like a double chain knot bracelet, super easy and quick. And from there, I was hooked and um, I was obsessed with all of bright colored and embroidery floss. And so I started making bracelets and that kind of happened on and off again for several years. Um, I continued to make friendship bracelets through high school. And um, I even would like bring my box of floss to school and let my friends pick out colors and then pick out a bracelet pattern and I would make them a bracelet um, so yeah and the other thing too is it was very um, usual for my family me and my sister to kind of pick up things to do during the summer when we weren't in school and for me that was crafty things so whether it be friendship bracelet making or making pot holders or um, learning how to knit um, learning how to quilt sewing pajama shorts, pretty much anything that you could think to do during the summer, I did. <laughs> um, so that kind of jumps into the knitting and quilting part that I mentioned. I kind of, I started my first knitting project when I was in high school and um, I knitted a hat and it was just like on straight needles, no like circular needles or anything like that. And I think I used some like baby yarn and I to this day have never worn that hat <laughs> um, but I was very proud of it and I also that was when I also realized that um, not all craft projects are made to be completed in one sitting um, and so that was kind of interesting because I am a very like oh I'm so excited I'm gonna I'm gonna start it and I'm gonna finish it right now and it's gonna be great and that's not how a lot of crafts work um, usually takes weeks or even months to finish a project um, if it's you know like a nice like something that you actually want to be proud of and show off um, so yeah and then I my mom had gotten into quilting kind of when I was about to go off to college because she wanted to make quilts for me and my roommate that um, had like our state our school colors on the quilt and had like our monogram in the middle and stuff and so when she was doing that I was kind of interested so I just got like a, a stack of squares that were already cut from like Joann's or something and made like a teeny tiny like baby blanket um, situation it's still floating around somewhere <laughs> doesn't really get used because it's too small to actually use as a blanket but um, yeah and my mom made a few more quilts after that and then 
while I was actually in college, I didn't do too many crafts like all the time because I was an engineering student and so I had lots and lots of homework and difficult tests and quizzes to study for. So if I wasn't um, doing school stuff, I was either babysitting or playing uh, video games. <laughs> so, um, but I did make, my, when I graduated college, I made myself a t-shirt quilt with um, the t-shirts that I had collected throughout college. And um, actually that one's really easy to get to. I'm gonna grab that really quick. <laughs> okay, um, so the t-shirt quilt that I made after I graduated college, um, I did not do like a standard quilting style. I did like what is known on the internet as a rag quilt. And so blankets are hard to show on video from what I've seen. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm just gonna kind of pull some of it up. I mean, it's very like, it has all these different, um, like each block is a t-shirt and on the back is the other side of that t-shirt. So I basically cut a square out of like around the pattern that was or like the design that was on the shirt and then I used the other side of the shirt and then in between is a layer of flannel and so then each square is sewn together and then you just kind of snip the like sewed parts so anyway it, it makes for a very easy quilt and this blanket is very heavy because it's just a bunch of t-shirts there's like 30 t-shirts on here but anyway, if I can find a picture to put in the video and figure out how to do that, I'll do that so you can see the whole blanket. <laughs> but um, I really enjoy this blanket because otherwise these t-shirts would just be sitting in a drawer and I would not wear them. So anyway. So moving on to the actual cross stitching part of my craft story. Um, the very first cross stitch I ever did was during the summer between uh, school years. Um, and it was actually after my freshman year of college and I picked up just a random kit that I liked from Michaels or something and I actually have it here to show you. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, this I framed, oh, <laughs> that's my cat, I don't know if you could hear her. Um, but yeah, so I got this kit from Michaels, it's just a dimensions kit. Um, it says it's all about the journey. But the fun thing about this pattern is that when I started this back in 2015, I did all of the crosses. Like, there's back stitching on this, but I didn't do, I hadn't done any of the back stitching at the time. I literally just did the cross stitch. And when I finished it, I was like, oh, I don't want, like know what to do with it now. So I think I just never finished, fully finished it because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it when I do finish it. So why should I finish it? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, so once I kind of got back on the cross stitch train back in fall of 2020, I picked this back up and I fully finished it. I did all the back stitching and um, put it in a frame. I, granted, I did not frame this properly. I literally just cut it out and popped it in the frame and like the glass is still in here. So, but honestly, and I also signed it um, 2015. That's my initials. <laughs> I People think it says red, but it doesn't. It's A-E-O. And anyway, so I signed it 2015, even though I fully finished it in 2020, because this is my first cross stitch, so I kind of wanted that to be there. But anyway, I really like it, even though it's definitely not perfect. Because, like, there's French knots on this. There should not be glass against that, but too bad, so sad. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> um, so anyway. Um... But yeah, so after that, oh, I also, I forgot to grab one thing. Give me a second. Okay, so after I, so I got back into the cross stitch thing in fall of 2020. And I was, I had come across some videos on YouTube. And then that turned into seeing false tube videos. And I was like, wow, there is like a whole world <laughs> on the internet about this craft. And that got me really excited because I've always enjoyed watching YouTube, but watching floss tube is very different from watching YouTube because when I watch floss tube, I feel like I'm watching real people <laughs> and not just an influencer. And so that's really refreshing. And also to, you know, 
be able to listen to people get really excited about a craft because it's when you are excited about something that like not everybody does it's kind of interesting to try to find the people who actually want to listen to what you have to say about your craft <laughs> so my cat's playing with my foot um but yeah so uh, one of my friends who lives in the same okay piper you're knocking the camera sorry hold on this is piper <laughs> she uh, just woke up from her nap so she's ready to play but anyway um one of my friends who lives in the same complex as me we actually went to college together she started talking about how during quarantine her and her mom kind of got back into cross stitching and then I was like oh you know what I did that a long time ago I'm gonna try it again and so I like went to Etsy and tried to find a pattern that I liked and I came across this um, like full coverage Thomas Kincaid Disney piece and I was like I want to do that <laughs> but um, I'll put a picture up I'll talk about it later too um, but I knew that I needed to do something a lot less small <laughs> smaller um, before I tried to tackle a project that big so I went to DMC's website they actually have some free patterns and I picked um, this moon pattern because um, I work as an engineer at a company that does a lot of space work um, so I I did I did this moon and um, I it took a lot longer than I thought it would because this is kind of my first project back into cross stitching so I was like oh yeah like I'll just like whip that up real quick <laughs> it this is like um, I think the diameter of this moon is like six inches and it's full coverage and the whole thing is in DMC Etois. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. Um, I did not take French. <laughs> but anyway, so it's very glisteny. And this frame is from Target. And I want to change out the mat inside. But for now, this is how it is. I want to get a black mat with a bigger opening. Um, but yeah, so I'm really proud of how it turned out. Um, definitely also did not frame this completely. Like, I literally have just taped the cross stitch to the mat but you know what it works and the stitches aren't touching the glass because of the mat so you know it's a little bit better than the last one that I did but yeah so um, while I was also working on this I um, bought a pattern off Etsy from Stitchrovia and I picked out the one it's called um, Awesome Myth And I finished this um, not too long ago, maybe like a month or so ago, but um, I have not framed it or anything yet, but this is what it looks like. Um, I loved the colors in this. I loved how sparkly the top of the narwhal was. Um, I loved all the flourishes on uh, scattered around the entire thing. Um, so yeah. I really and I put my initials under the H there <laughs> um, so yeah I really like how this turned out I have I, I my intent is to put it in a frame but um, I have not tried to find one yet I think um, I think it should be able to fit in an 8 by 10 so I just need to I find it very hard to find frames that I like so I'm just taking my time <laughs> But um, I'll, I, now this one I fully intend to like actually mount this onto some, I don't know what they call it, like the board that you would mount cross stitch on um, and like not, you know, cut the fabric so close to the actual stitching. So we'll see how that goes. But it, I don't see that happening anytime soon because like I said, I have not found a frame that I like for this. So... I feel like a teal colored frame would be really pretty, but, and I'm not opposed to having to like paint a frame that I find, but yeah, so that's what that looks like. <laughs> um, let's see, maybe, okay, so the next whip that I have is my very first stitch along, um, which is the Made to Create stitch along by Caterpillar Cross Stitch, and um, I have completed all the parts so far and the next part comes out 
in like four days. So I'm excited. I think the tea is going to be next. And um, this is very wrinkly because homegirl don't have an iron. <laughs> so um, I pretty much always take my cross stitch to my boyfriend's apartment and use his iron. So I have not done that with this yet. So that's why it's very wrinkly. But anyway, here's my uh, made to create. I can't really see what I'm showing you. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I love this pattern so much. Like the colors, I love that it's on this like dark colored fabric because it really makes the colors pop but um i think my favorite part so far is the measuring tape it took forever but it looks so good and i love the color pink so um i think her name is jessica from needle and floss she has done this on vintage country mocha and i love it like it like I know this color is very similar but it doesn't have that modeling on it and hers just looks so good like I'm very tempted to just like stitch this whole thing again just so I can stitch it on vintage country mocha um, but I don't know I may not really do that because this is taking a long time but also because the parts aren't all out yet so anyway I really like this a lot a lot a lot <laughs> next thing I'm going to show are all Satsuma Street projects. So apparently I really like Satsuma Street. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna show, I bought the Alice in Wonderland pattern. It was a stitch along, I guess, last year, two years ago. I'm not really sure. This was before I was really into all the cross stitching stuff. But, um, so I'm kind of stitching it my own way, not necessarily how the parts were released, but this is what it looks like so far. Um, this is quite a lot. I, I always see people do this in their floss tube videos and now I understand how hard it is. But um, this is what I have so far. I started in the middle um, with Alice and there's some back stitching that I haven't done yet simply because that color wasn't at, called out yet for a cross and I didn't want to like cut a whole thing of thread for like a tiny bit of stitching. So anyway, I'm really excited. I love doing the little card at the top. So I can't wait to move on to another section. But, and this needle minder here is from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher. I love this rainbow fish. I, I read that book as a kid. But anyway, and I made this daisy one, so. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm really excited about that one. And then kind of along the same lines as the Alice in Wonderland, um, Jody Rice, who's the designer for Satsuma Street, came out with a new stitch along um, that has the same format as the Alice in Wonderland one, and it is for The Wizard of Oz. So I was like, I'm all about matching things, especially when I really like the um, like colors and stuff, so I um, totally signed up for The Wizard of Oz one. And so the way she releases the... Um, patterns or like the sections is the first one was all the borders and then I think the next chapter is going to be the top block so I just have done some of the border not all so this is all I have so far um, I started at the top right here and I basically like measured what the middle was and then I like measured down like three inches from the top and yeah so I've done one little side block over here and I still have a lot of border to work on so I the so these parts come out like every two weeks and I don't know I feel like you would have to be a monogamous stitcher to be able to get this entire section done be, in two weeks before the next part comes out but maybe that's maybe that's not the point to finish before each section comes out I just think it's a lot of stitching. I don't have time to do all of it before the next part comes out. Uh, this needle minder is from Crafty Snail on Etsy. I'll try to link all this stuff below. I haven't done this before, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's my Wizard of Oz. Okay, so I have two more things to show you. Um. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and show the other Satsuma Street one. Um, so this is called Garden Party. 
And this one actually comes in two colorways. I chose the warm one because I really like pinks and purples. Um, purple's technically cool, but it goes with all the pink. Anyway, you'll see. <laughs> this is what I have so far. Um, I So here's the deal. This fabric is 25 count. And I had originally bought this fabric to fit if I do this two over two. Um, but that also is was going to be big, huge because, I mean, 14 count equivalent would be 28 if you do over two. So this was going to be bigger than like, a, this was going to be more like a 12 count kind of, I guess, if I did it over two. And I honestly didn't know if I really wanted it that big. I also was very interested in the idea of doing one over one because I had never done one over one before. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this one over one. We'll see how it goes. These are the tiniest stitches I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's really cute. I, um, I just, I've only done the center part. Um, I'll, I'll try to pop up the pictures of what these are supposed to look like. Um, but yeah, so anyway, if I do this one over one, it should fit in this entire hoop. And I kind of liked that idea because um, then I could then it would be a lot smaller and I could finish it in a hoop and not have to worry about what frame I was going to put it in. Or, like, I think this one is finished as a pillow, but I also, I think when people finish stuff in pillows, I think it's so cute, but I don't have any where to put that in my house or my apartment. So finishing things as a pillow seems rather silly to me. For my personal life I guess but anyway that's why I wanted to do it in a hoop because then I could hang out on the wall as opposed to having this pillow propped up somewhere that no one can actually like sit on or lean their head against because that stitching takes a long time you don't want to ruin it <laughs> anyway so that's my garden party I just had the center part the whole reason I really like this pattern is because it reminds me of It's a Small World at Disney World. And as many people complain about that ride and how like annoying the song is, I love it. So, anyway. <laughs> okay. Oh, and this needle minder is from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Last thing I'm going to show you is my biggest project, which I am also dreading. <laughs> because I'm trying so hard to get a page finish and I'm oh, I'm just so close to it so far. Anyway. This is the um, Sweetheart Campfire that I mentioned earlier in the video. This is all I have so far. I am like, I think the end of the page is like where this kind of line is. So I just have all this speckly stuff to finish and then the page will be finished. <sighs> anyway. This, I, I'm really excited to get to a different part of this cross stitch because this is just the top left corner and it's just like a bunch of like trees like kind of going over at the scene and it's not that exciting but also i don't have pattern keeper so i am literally i literally have a printout of this pattern and i'm coloring it with the highlighter every time i do a stitch so that part of it makes it really not that fun to work on. I feel like Pattern Keeper would make this more fun, but I also don't have an Android tablet, and I feel really weird about buying an Android tablet specifically for one app. So, maybe one day, but right now I'm still convincing myself that it's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. This is my sweetheart campfire. <laughs> um, I see that this video is almost at the 30 minute mark. Um, which I'm honestly very surprised because I thought that it would be hard for me to talk in my first floss tube, but apparently not. Um, I guess that just proves to show that um, if you really are excited about something, it's not hard to ramble on and on about it. So, um, I also am kind of into crochet right now, and I have some other crochet projects that I'm working on. But um, I'll save those for another video. Um, yeah. So, I'm, my, I don't have hard solid plans for floss tube in general but I think I'll try to do a new video every two weeks I feel like that'll be a good starting point for me um, because I don't I don't feel like I get too much done in just one week so I feel like I'll have more to show if I do it every two weeks um, 
So hopefully I can stick to that. Um, if not, you can follow me on Instagram to post another video. <laughs> I don't know. You gotta let me know if you guys like this. Um, Cause I'm kind of just, right now I'm talking to the void since this is my first video, but. Um, oh, before I wrap up, I do want to give shout outs to some of my favorite floss tubers who kind of inspired me to start my own floss tube. Um, I, so I'll, I'll link them below, but um, to name a few, um, I really like watching X Stitch MD um, Shiloh. I really enjoy watching Rocio from Cocahoma Stitchery, um, Liz from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, um, Jessica from The Needle and Floss, and um, Megan from Georgia Girl Stitching. I actually know her in person. <laughs> um, her, um, her her fiance and my boyfriend go to med school together. So. Um, and there's so many others. I will link all the people that I really like below. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I am going to wrap it up here and hopefully this editing process doesn't nearly kill me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so have a great weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>